Hello and welcome to another edition of A Lot, that's with two T's, of help here on my network, JLJ Media. I'm the James Lott Jr. of JLJ Media. I'm a lot of a lot of help on both of those things. And we're here talking about your mental health, which is very important. Especially this, during this time of the year, for many of us, it's, it's important all year round. But we're saying this time of year, sometimes things get exacerbated, and brought out, uh, and more sort of forefront. So again, I bring you on professionals who will talk to you and give you ideas and things. And this one actually is on something that we don't really talk about enough of, and that is self-gratitude. And you probably think, well, what does that mean? We know what gratitude means. We know what self means. What does that mean? Well, we're going to find out. So let me read her credits, as we say in Hollywood, so make sure you, so you know, what she, know who she is. She is a licensed therapist who specializes in the evaluation and treatment of anxiety, depression, and trauma. She holds a master's in science in counseling and is known for her unique approach in the understanding of anxiety and anxiety disorders. Uh, she is also the founding, she is the founder, or foundling, or something else. She is the founder of The Missing Piece. I love the way that's, I love the way it's spelled, P-E-A-C-E, for those who are listening to this podcast. Uh, Center for Anxiety, a facility that offers a variety of modalities, including psychotherapy, neurofeedback, art therapy, which I love. Um, okay, I guess I can't, I can't read, uh, whatever, anxiety reduction, group therapy, movement, and more. What's all well, about that, too? I have bad eyesight. My glasses are over there. Welcome, Laura Rhodes-Levin. Hi, <laughs> Laura. <laughs> My fans know I'm real on the show. I'm totally real. I can do it. But hello. Real is good. It's the only way to be. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the show, Laura. I'm so happy to have you. Um, okay, so, okay, so actually, let's go into first the missing, the, the the missing piece. I love that. As you know, I use a lot of help. It was all punny and everything. I love it. But tell me about, tell me about the center. So uh, in today's world, there seems to be a lot of treatment for drug and alcohol addiction, which I love. I've been sober for 15 years more. Thank you. Um, but what I found is that uh, there's not a lot of mental health places that exist for people who just have regular depression and anxiety trauma who have not turned to drugs. And it's very difficult. The whole beauty of the 12 step program is you identify with people. And when you put someone in with extreme trauma or depression or anxiety, they're not identifying always with the 12 steps. So I wanted to create a center for anxiety because ever since I was a little girl, I, my sister was fast asleep. I saw a bear in the closet. I have no idea why. Uh, I lived in Tarzana. There were no bears. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks, no, no, that's, that's Southern California, but you don't know that. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The man who wrote Tarzan. Um, yes, <laughs> anyway, uh, we... We are more triggered in today's world. Our brains are overwhelmed. They're yeah. not really designed for the world we have created. And the example I give is our body. You know, we're not out there hunting mammoth. We're not climbing the steeps for lavender. So now we've got to invent exercise to maintain our shape. Well, our brains are really overwhelmed. And that amygdala, that limbic system, is really tech. So where do you go to get real help beyond just talking for an hour? And that's why I created The Missing Piece because I got my own inner piece through these modalities. And I thought, let's put them all together. You know, there, I, was, I sit on another show um, that I really believe, going back back off what you said, technology. Technology advances so fast. And, but I feel like emotionally, we have not caught up to all of it. Mm -hmm. so just saying that right there triggered me going, yes, but all the cell phones and the tablets and this, and we have Zoom meetings and this, and, and we're bombarded with all this information on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And, and we think we can handle it. We think we're handling it as part of our lives. But I feel like mentally though, um, now we're seeing people curate their lives, so their lives are better than yours, so you're jealous over here, and you feel like you're lacking over here, or why am I not included over here? Like it's, it seems like when we go faster, because I know in my lifetime, um, I think I'm the generation that saw all this stuff kind of before and after. Like I, we, we did, you know, I'm in my 50s, I saw, so it's like, I'm seeing, I remember what, I, yeah, that's why I grew up, I have 50s. I remember 
when there was, a, was no cell phones. I remember rotary phones. I remember transistor radios. I remember 8-track. I mean, I remember things that were not, and type, I learned how to type in high school on a typewriter, folks. Um, right. It's not a computer or, no, it wasn't even, it wasn't even a, a processor. It wasn't even one of those, that had come out later. I was in the 80s. S-A, J-K-L semicolon. <laughs> That's right, girl. But you know, James, it goes even further back than that because we're driving at 70 miles an hour on the freeway. When they first invented train travel and people were going 10, 15 miles an hour, they were getting nauseous and throwing up. And, and we've just moved ahead in so many ways. And our brain is constantly activated in a fight or flight state. When you're driving, you may think you're not in a fight flight state, but the second someone swerves into your lane, you get a cortisol dump and adrenaline dump and all that good stuff. So. Uh, yeah, especially, especially here, well, here in Los Angeles, <laughs> especially uh, in, in bigger cities like Houston, LA, so where there's a lot of, a lot of traffic. Um, when you get in the car, you think, oh, I'm playing soft music. I mean, no, you're still on high alert, right? You're still on high alert because yeah, anything yeah. can happen. You have to be. Mm-hmm. Mm, I like that. So yeah, so I I, I kind of agree with you. We're working on bars. So I'm glad you found a place that you said something also that's very interesting. I never I never really thought about this before. Um, if you don't turn to drugs, alcohol, food addictions, where that's where you because a lot of these places they treat you for that. Mm-hmm. And it's a problem that leads to that kind of also, but they're treating you for that too. This is something totally different. This is just straight up anxiety, straight up depression. Um, and you don't know how to handle it on your own. Like you don't know how to process it, right? Yeah. And, and you know, the antidepressants only take you so far. Uh, the, the anxiety pills are worse than anything because they get you addicted on their own. Uh, and what I've really learned is the secret is in how we experience the earth. Our five senses come to your senses mm. um, is really the way to go. Cause if your dog is stressed out, you're not like, what triggered you fluffy? <laughs> um, you're going to calm this animal down. And we want to think, we want to think about our problems. And that is just a different part of your brain than the emotion center. So it's about learning you know, here at the center, I loved you trying to go through the list. You know, we do aromatherapy, we do massage, we do movement, we do breath work, we do music uh, therapy. Sitting like just with a drum, you don't have to be a drummer for just a half hour and you like get into it. You're not thinking about your taxes anymore or, or you know, that your boyfriend's mad at you or whatever it is that has become so overwhelming. And so the talk therapy is a part of it, but yeah. you got to work with the rest of your body to help ground you, be in the moment, appreciate the moment. Uh, I, I just, it, it's about being joyful, right? True success is measured by the amount of joy in your life. And, we for, and that's why I think self-gratitude is important we're we're it, there's a real big difference between ego and look at all that i did versus self love and appreciating yourself even you know you talk about being in your 50s i've earned every one of these grades okay. that's right? right me too and these hands that are a little wrinkly they've <laughs> held my nieces and nephews they have fed me they have dried me you know i mean just appreciating you and what you do for yourself and how hard you have worked to get where you are. Yeah, we're good. I, you know, don't get dig into that. I want to really dig into that, but I want to stay on the point that you just made. That's just, it's so good. It's that, um, you know, we have these, we have these other things. You like for me, you just noticed my whole, everybody knows my back. I decided for my own spirit to yeah. decorate early. And so I'm going to decorate early because I do at nighttime when everything's lit up. I have things on timers and stuff. And at nighttime, it's all lit up, and I lower the lights. I feel so much better. I feel warm. I feel just calmer. So when you're just saying that, I was going, yeah, there are other therapies to do that. And see, luckily, I'm a creative. So I luckily, when I get mad at somebody, I write a song. Or write well, a poem. I love that. But we used to just. The light, the sun went down. We played music. We stared at the stars. 
you yeah. know, listen to animal sound. I mean, it's it's all the world has created a beautiful escape for us, or rather, it's so ironic that we call it an escape. Right. When right. Really what it is is about being able to be in the moment without being hijacked by a scenario that doesn't exist. I just read a book and I, I love this saying in it. It was, um, my life has been filled with misfortunes, most of which have never happened. Ooh. Right? I like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So like being that. present and not just being in the fantasy of horror. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I just, I just, I know, I just, I just, yeah, I like the whole idea of there are other ways to work on these things of depression, anxiety. And like I said, I look out, I like to say, for my examples, I do, I paint, I write, I mean, I, I look out, I get to actually work it out. I can write the ending I wanted that I didn't get, or I can really work through, or I have some, I have some dark writing that I have that I'm not really angry. I'm writing this angry song um, and just getting it out on the page. And I will tell you folks out there, it does feel better, but she's saying also there are other ways, you know, said smell, sense. Also, I tell me good food. When I smell certain foods, oh yeah. It takes me back to like a childhood memory that's wonderful. My grandmother who's not here anymore or whatever. I'm like, that's so funny. In and out burger, just drive by and I'm like, oh my God, I love it. I mean, it really oh. does suddenly, I mean, we laugh, but suddenly you do feel a different way than you did a second ago. Yeah, and and you know we all know lavender relaxes us, yes. but so much more complex than that. There's sense that you can use to help you concentrate. You know, when you when you just can't focus, your mind's wandering. What brings you into the present? What releases those neurotransmitters? So it's it's so much more complex than we realize, and yet it's so simple. Right. You just need to know what to do. Okay. So now we're going to, to the self gratitude thing. So I want to kind of break it in. I want to break into it. All right. So one, people in general, and you know this already, but people at home, you may feel this also. People have a hard time congratulating themselves or seeing good. As you think it'd be easy, but apparently people taking compliments. People wow. have the hardest time. Not me. <laughs> no. Um, a lot of people. <laughs> Five dollars. You know, exactly. But, um, but no, but it's it's funny that that's, you know, we we immediately default to negative. We immediately default to I can't. I always have a saying in my in my coaching practice, we're going to change I can't to I am. Mm, that's I always awesome. say that. So then I came up with one day, I was thinking about it. I was like, yeah, this, we're going to stop this whole I can't thing. Not I can't to I can, but just the I am. But you're living it. Like you said, being present. No, I can do this. Yeah, I can do this, but I am this. Yes. You know, the default to the I can't. It don't they all the time. I am not. Yeah. <sighs> it's uh it's amazing how easily we're drawn to the darkness as opposed and we shy away embarrassingly from the light. We do it. I mean, we do it all the time, don't we? I mean, and I mean part of I'm sure is media news i mean all this stuff that family trauma generational trauma i'm sure all that stuff is part of it but then it's like well say one good thing about yourself and i've had people have the hardest time picking something you know what i assign a lot of clients the task of writing yourself a love letter Ooh. and that is amazingly hard for people um they even will have to call up other people and say, what do you, what's nice about me? What do you like about me? Why, why are you friends with me? Uh, because we're taught that patting yourself on the back is, you know, it's, it's not okay. And um, it, I think it was Joseph Mankiewicz, not positive, who said, it is just as false to blow your horn too softly as it is to blow it too loudly. I get it. I get it. Be, be real. There, there, if you could take any person that you know, and you could say to them, if I put into this room all the people that you have affected in your life, we'd fill the block. You just, we don't realize that maybe one day you said to a cashier, have a great day. Thank you so much. You were so helpful. And they didn't kill themselves that day. I am not kidding. Right. So, you know, it's just so important to know how, how, 
important you are and how special and individual you are and believe in that own that i had a uh, i had a brother who passed away five years ago suddenly mm -hmm. i miss him very much but one of the things that was comfort to me was at the funeral mm -hmm. i laugh we chuckle because there was he, he was at he was at a job for 20 years and got fired he had done some shady stuff got fired I mean, he knew it was his fault um, but he got another job after that was fine, whatever, for another 10 years before he passed. But at the funeral, what got me was that those ex-coworkers from that job showed up and spoke. Wow. And I was like, you just saying right now, maybe go, that's the point, right? Yes. That's the point. How you affected people so much in a positive way. And you never, ever realize it. And, and you know, Whenever I mention the inner child, you know, that little girl or boy or or child inside, I feel like my own eyes rolling like, <laughs> oh, it's psychobabble. Right. But yes. yeah. if you think of yourself that way and and you try and motivate yourself that way and you think of a little kid outside yourself uh, who's going in for a job interview and you say to that kid, you're probably not going to get it. I, you should be really nervous and freak out. And let's face it, you're, you're not that skilled. So I wouldn't hope too much. We say stuff like that to ourselves all the time. Oh, you're probably too fat. You're not going to get the job. Would you say that to a kid? Would you say that to anyone ever? Would you say that to your best friend? Would you say that to the grocery person who said, oh, I'm, I'm up for a promotion. Would you say to them, hey, don't quit your day job? You wouldn't. But we say that to ourselves like, boom, no problem. That's, that's, that's the way you should talk to yourself. That's so true. When you put it that way, Laura, it's so interesting. When you put it that way, would you say the things you say to yourself to other people? That's very interesting out loud. That's because, I mean, we do say it's like, I'm not as skilled as they are. They're yeah. way they're more way more better looking than I am. So would you say to somebody, well, you know what? You know you're kind of ugly. So I yeah. mean, you're not gonna get it. I'm sorry. I mean your nose is too big. You know you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. That's I never thought of that way either. That's very interesting. You're probably gonna say something dumb. I hope you think about that thought for the next five hours because probably everyone in the room is thinking about that stupid sentence you just said. Yeah, I yeah, I never I never thought of that. It's so good. I've never. Yeah, it's very interesting, Laura. I'm very interesting. I like that. That's very, and we, and we do all the things we said. We, we're harder on ourselves than anybody else can ever be. Anyway, I mean, we're just yes. we're trying. And so the opposite of that is is self gratitude of how Let's about see. you're going for this job interview? That's okay. awesome. If you get it, you don't get it. Whatever you're doing, it you're out there. You should be proud of yourself. You put yourself together. Nice job. You know. Good. So let's do this because I want I want to ask you this question because this is what always comes up whenever I say something like gratitude and self and self love and and self time. When we say self, people start getting their the, the hairs on our back stand up all of a sudden. Um, when someone says to you, "But Laura, is that being selfish to to focus on myself or give myself compliments or or take time for myself?" I'm a mother of five. I don't have any like. Why should I, you know, taking 15 minutes for myself a day, that's great, you know, like whatever, whatever it is, they say, is that selfish? Is that so? What do you say to that? So to me, selfish is based in ego and insecurity, whereas self-love is based in gratitude and, um, and acknowledgement. So um, uh, let me use a really trite example. Okay. Someone wants to go out and buy a fancy car because they feel insecure about how much money they make and they want to show off and they want to be like, oh, I have a Porsche. That comes from insecurity. Right. But self-love says, I worked really hard and I've always wanted that car. And I just, I'm going to get it for myself and that's okay. But it's, it's the feelings that go on underneath it that make a really, really big difference. Selfish is, I'm not going to his birthday party because I don't give a shit. Or oh, we love to say shit. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's right. That's right. Don't say too many of them. Like you say, you get a few, you're fine. We're not explicit. Yeah. Um, I I just don't care. That that's then you're you're kind of being selfish. You're not thinking about the other person. 
But if it's a situation where you're tired and you're exhausted and you can say, you know what, for me, I need to stay in tonight. I need to just put on a robe yes. and put on a fire and some music and look at my beautiful Christmas lights. And I need to do that for me. That's different. But folks have a hard time. I mean, I, I'm trying, I think I'm trying, I'm trying to tell people it's okay to say no sometimes or just not tonight because we, it's almost like being on an airplane. That example, you have to put the mask on first. Folks don't get that concept either. They're like, what? I'm like, no, you have to get it. If you don't put it on, something can happen to you before you actually, you know, I mean, you have to put it on first and then you put it on the child or whatever. That, that's why you could be fully healthy enough to help them for what the situation's coming. It's like you kind of funny because you just gave me a visual that I've never gotten before because I use the mask thing. But sadly, when people go for help for mental health, it's when their plane is crashing. Mm. And, and, you know, when we're pushed up, push against the shelf, we're like, give me that mask. Right? Yeah, so yes, yes. <laughs> twice about it. Right. So why wait until you're about to crash before you take care of yourself? Okay, so um, so so explain to folks what self kind of what you, you did a little bit already, but kind of let's just break it down. What is self gratitude? For me, uh, I remember I was in Hawaii and I was in the jacuzzi having a cup of coffee, and I was like, I wish I could start every morning. Like oh, can you imagine? Oh, yeah. And then I was like, I can. At the time, my apartment building had a jacuzzi. Oh, okay. Why not get a cup of coffee and start your day that way? So as strange as this may seem, I really try and live my life like I'm on vacation. I want to take my time. I don't want to rush places. I want to enjoy moments. I don't know if you're experiencing any difficulty. My um, computer was doing weird things. So far, no. So far, you've been fine. I heard a couple of dings, but other than that, you're fine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> taking your time, doing what, if you were on vacation and six people wanted to do that and three people wanted to do this, you would do what you wanted to do and living your life honestly. And here's the thing. The more you fill up your tank, it's so much easier to give. It's so much easier yes. for me when my sister says, can you get up early and pick the kids up from school this morning? I have to do whatever. My tank is full. I'm like, yeah, happy to do it. But when I am running on empty and I'm exhausted and I've overcommitted myself, I'm like, I can't, I just can't. And so I just don't want to live that way anymore. And I really, I hope that I walk the walk and, and that I, I keep my tank full because I, with my own self-love, I can then love others in ways I just can't from an empty place. So it's kind of like a fountain. You fill up your fountain, it's going to flow. And, and that's the difference between gratitude and selfishness. Okay. When, if you're a fountain and you're taking everything in and you don't give any of it away, now you've got that stagnant fountain with yeah. the mosquitoes on the top. Yeah. If you put nothing into your fountain and you're giving from nothing, you're that fountain. Yes. yes. But if you fill yourself up, it's so easy to give. And so <laughs> it's a, it's a win-win. Yeah, that's that's so true. I I totally agree with that. I I um I always tell people sometimes there are times when I've given all day, and that's it. And so now I got to replenish. Um, yeah. That could mean I can't talk to you on the phone tonight. It means I want to watch the new Sex and the City. If, you know, I'm going to sit on watch that and close every close the door to my room, close you know to turn the phone on silent and sit and watch it for two hours. You know what I mean? And and have a glass of wine. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of like. I just, you know, there's times when I've learned, I've had to learn this in the last five, six years. I learned this where I'm like, nope, 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 nope. I just, I have nothing to give right now. I'm okay. I love you. I'll see you probably tomorrow or I'll talk to you later tonight or, you know, and I have, I have to replenish. I have to. Yeah. It, you're fooling yourself if you're not. And no is a complete sentence, by the way. I, I agree, girl. I that do. I agree with that. Not a good time. <laughs> 
No, and, and, but people have a hard time saying no because they're people pleasers. They have a hard time saying no. It's like, no, say no, 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 no. And you can say no in ways that aren't, you know, combative. No, you can just be matter of fact and be like, just, no, I just, not tonight. And often people will make up little white lies that they feel really guilty about. Yes. Later. And it's like, just, just say, I'm, I'm too tired. I'm so right. sorry. You know, I use my age all the time for fun. I'm like, you know, I'm old. I can't do that. I'm tired. I worked all day. I can't. I got to stay home. I'm in my 50s. I mean, I'm just, for, just for fun. You know, I know I'm not that old, but yeah, I mean, for fun. No, no, but, no, but, I, no, but I do. But no, I agree with you. I mean, because you, if you cause don't add anything on top of everything else. Like, you don't need to add anything on it. So adding a white lie or saying something you think they might want to hear that will soften the blow, but you still feel bad because you lied. I'm like, who needs, who needs all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And quite often in today's world, since we're all so busy, most people are like, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> I they get are. to home tonight too. <laughs> yeah, most people, most people get it. So Laura's right. Most people, most people are like, okay, I got it. You know, I'm tired too. Okay, got it. We'll get together next week. Like, okay, great. And next week I'll probably be a lot better. And again, we'll have a better, and we'll have a better time. Yeah. It's funny. We'll both get yeah. there, both be well rested, we'll have a better time. When I, not just, well, please, I mean, well, beg, like, please, I'm like, no, I'm like, stop. That makes you want to shut down more. Because I'm like, no, no, stop trying to force me because of your own agenda. Why you want me to come out? That's your stuff, whatever that is. Right, right, right. And I think understanding that it's not personal, you know, if someone cancels on you, it's just that they got to take care of themselves and vice versa. Okay, so, um. It's been a really strange time period the last couple of years. Um, I hadn't noticed. Uh, yeah, and I was like, Jason, what are you talking about? Let's throw it on here. Here he's like, no horrible, it's wonderful. <laughs> you know, um, it's, I don't even mention what's going on. We know what's going on, but it's been, it's been a strange time period, as you know. Um, so how do people even on a regular day basis already have that weighing on them? I'm sure it's caused a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. Um, for a lot of people, even people like me, at one point I was depressed for a couple months just because it was like I couldn't work, I couldn't do anything, everything was shut down in LA. Um, so how do we reach those people? I mean, like you said it's kind of like don't wait till the plane is already about to crash. You should so you should when the when the one engine goes out, you probably should start looking for help. So I mean, how do we kind of navigate that during this now almost two year period of strangeness? Well. I also heard another saying recently that true peace is knowing what to ignore. Mm. And it's so important to be involved in what's going on in the world and doing your part. But I found with COVID, it didn't enter everyone's living room except for through the television set or the internet or something. And people were living with it as if it were right. There was almost like land shark. I know I'm dating myself. But <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's like, first of all, there were so many different beliefs on, on so many yeah. different sides. And I don't think anybody's a bad guy. I think everybody's afraid of different things. Yes. I think in COVID, a lot of people rediscovered themselves. They found yes. whole new ways to be. They reinvented themselves. So there were good things that came out of it. Yeah. What is something that, that is good that can come out of it for you? Maybe it is learning about self-care. Maybe when you get sick, God forbid, you realize, oh, work can live without me for three weeks and it's okay to take care of myself and I don't need to get close to death to yeah. do that. And, um, just leaving the news on the outside. Be aware, be on whatever side you want to be on, but don't invite it into your home for dinner because most of us, we're okay. Right. You're okay. And I think we feel guilty about not feeling terrible for the state of the world and what everybody's going through. And it's important to do that, but that's not everything. There's so much more. And if God forbid you are about to be taken by COVID in the next few months, yeah. enjoy the life you have. May, may as well. So really focusing on what 
is good. Gratitude, it sounds so corny, but it is the elixir to feeling okay no matter what. I, um, three years ago, right? Because I said three years? Yeah, three years ago, that's right. I had a severe case of Bell's palsy. Oh. And so I was down for almost a year. Mm. I had a severe case. My face was paralyzed, left side, oh, everything. It was oh, horrible. Amazingly. Oh, thank you. I, well, I, well, because here, I can actually tie this all together. For, I didn't just go for shits and giggles. I'm going to tie it together. Because when I was laying there, um, the doctors can't do anything for you. They can't do anything. They really can't do anything. I didn't think any pregnancy stuff in the beginning for the inflammation. But once that's done, it's literally nothing else they can do for you for the most part. So I went holistically. Mm. Yes. So, so, that, so of course, I went to, I went to the hall. Uh, I used to be a nurse in my former life. So I know other things too. So I was like, so I went to the B, the vitamin B12. That's good for inflammation. I know all that kind of stuff. The food part I got taken care of. But almost like you said earlier, the mental part is what you have to work on. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm better today because of the mental part. Because I said, okay, how do I, you know, sometimes the stuff comes from stress. I can't tell you, you can't have any stress, no anxiety. If you have stress and anxiety, it'll prolong my facial, you know, drop. Um, mm-hmm. And and so they're saying you gotta get the mindset going. My mind, like, so I was saying, so you're right. So I so I now, you know, I, I took me about a year, about a year and a half total to get where I am now here. Um, I appreciate everything. I'm, I'm present all the time because I just know in a drop of it. One morning I woke up and I couldn't talk. Wow. So I was like, correctly, and I, I washed my face over five days just to get more and more paralyzed. Wow. Scariest shit of my life. Um, but it was the talking well to James, you will do. I mean, I know it sounds corny. I know it sounds corny. It sounds cheesy. It's real. It's real. real. And you found the gift in it. Not only did you heal yourself, but you emerged a better person. You emerged a better person. I, you know, I actually just saw this this morning on spectrum. Uh, this person, 23 years old, woke up to find out he was a three-time paraplegic and they he's got one arm that's it and they show him surfing and with the love of his life yes. and i mean it's so easy to jump onto that oh poor me thing and you can and we're all entitled oh yeah no yeah oh, they're talking, oh yeah, yeah. but we're also entitled to find the joy just find the joy as hard as it is. And if you can't do it, get help to find yeah. the joy. I got help. So also I had therapy. I got help. I had therapy. You to. I know I did. I had help for, for it too. But I, was, but I went on that path because I'm telling you guys, it does work. I'm telling you, it does work. Um, and it, like I said, again, it sounds cheesy and all stuff. I use all these buzzwords or whatever. You know, find your inner peace. And all stuff. But no, I really did have to find that. And I meant it every morning. So I meditate an hour every morning before I start. And that really has changed my life. I mean, I'm saying it just, it really has changed my life. So going straight to the phone and looking at what's on Instagram, what, who sent me an email, I take an hour first. Yes. Better myself. And, and it sound, I, know it sound, I know folks out there say it sounds, but it really, it is true. It really does. I swear it. You got it in reverse. If you wake up in the morning and you start thinking about every potential problem, it is going to bring you down. Yes. That's not cheesy. That's reality. Yeah. Why is the contrary cheesy? Right. And not reality. I know. It, it's just, it's, I, 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 you know, and the part of it is generational, I think, too, because, um, you know, our parents were the baby boomers who, you know, came out of, you know, after, you know, after war, and their parents were the greatest generation. It was all about just working hard and then it becomes easy in life. You know, you're told those things. I'm thinking about all these things I was told, like you're the man of the house now, my father and mother got divorced, you got to take care of the family. Like, I, can, I can hear the beginnings of where they start piling it on, right? Yes, patches. <laughs> yes. Woo! Yeah. It's, it, it is a different generation. We're all adapting. And by the, that same token, I'm, we're treating a lot of tre- teens um, and early 20s who have been so coddled by their parents. Oh, right. That they have zero stress tolerance. Zero. Wow. It's like, I'm in Calabasas, but I want to kill myself. Right. You're and, in Calabasas. You're in Calabasas. Like, hello. Because they're, and it's, it's, it's not, I'm not mocking them or oh, no. anything like that. It's just that 
their level of stress tolerance and their ability to deal with needing to strive for the best, needing to go out there and, and work it and, and, and having some bad days and learning how to turn that around. It's, there's something to be said. We, we haven't found that happy medium yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. For right. us, with our generation, I mean, our parents just had kids on the side. <laughs> we, were, we were just like, you know, what are they doing in there? Oh, fine. <laughs> That's true. Oh my goodness, so true. The latchkey kids. I had keys. I just go home and, well, I'll, I'll be home. I'll be at home after work. And like, we'll be home till like seven o'clock by ourselves. Yeah. I would take you to ballet, but I'm working on my fourth husband. I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. 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 <laughs> Jeez and crackers. We were actually really funny you say that. We I had I talked talk about that actually with somebody who's younger and they're like, what? I go, you have no idea. We basically raised ourselves. I mean, there was always food in the house. We always had a house to go to. Right. Our, my mother was like finding herself. My father was finding himself. I mean, it was like they were doing their thing, but we just had, you know, laws. So I, so I don't how to do that. And again, we don't know how to do things early because we weren't coddled. We learned how to, we know how to do laundry, we know how to cook. Yeah. Make sure things you just learn how to do in our generation. And you're yeah. right because. It'd be Mother's Day cards. Right, right, exactly. Right, right. And I was going to ask you because because you said that this Gen Z and Gen Alpha that's coming up, I have noticed there's some things I do like about them because they're trying to, they are trying to get back to self actually it seems like they're trying to get to that balance of especially in the workforce they're like i don't want to do this job i'm not doing it where we would sit through it back in the day we know better now but we would sit through the job and take it as long as we could right because you had a job yeah. it's like nowadays they're not but you're right but it's so they're so been so kind of sheltered from all of that and given what they needed that's kind of like well, some jobs just, they're not, no job is perfect either. So. <laughs> well, I guess I'm referring more to like the millennials. Early oh, too. Oh, yeah. oh, them too. Okay. Early Gen Z. Okay. 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 Well, they're all, they're all younger than me. So that, that makes sense. All, all of them. <laughs> they're, they're, all, they're all younger than I am. And, you know, and it's funny because I did, I raised two millennial daughters and I can tell you for a fact um, their mother and I were much more easier on them. We weren't super easy, but we, were, we wanted them to have a childhood we didn't have. So we were very involved. Sure. sure. But no, but I know that we were a little too much probably f compared to what we, we didn't want them to have what we had. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think responsibility, I know I do. My kids are this spoiled. I, I totally get it. I mean, but, 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 but it's one of those things where I, you know, we didn't know this, you know, then I was young, yeah. you know, whatever. So I think I take I take responsibility for, for some of their behaviors that come back to, to haunt me. I, yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, when you're abandoned as a kid or not paid, you know, my brother felt abandoned. So he practically like made a harness above my nephew's crib. <laughs> <laughs> and, like watched every moment of yeah. his life. The kid's like, uh, privacy. <laughs> I totally get it. No, yeah, no, I get it. And I don't think I think it's possibly for it. But when my kids get bratty at me now, I'm like, that's my fault, isn't it? That's why you're bratty. And we laugh about it and life goes on. But I just, but no, I no. So yeah, that generation too. No, you're right. But I, I'm just saying, I did, but I have noticed some of the younger ones too are still kind of, they're trying to find that, that, that work-life balance that we didn't try to find. I mean, we were just like. Well, and this is where the fountain comes in. You know, if we can all go back to that of like, yes, work the job you want to work, uh, but work it and fill yourself up and give. Like if you, that, that's the balance we're talking about not the me 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 not the go you're off in the background um and the pot again one of those cheesy things it's it's the way you talk to yourself most of the time if you really listen you're talking to yourself if a friend talked to you like that you'd be like oh, get out of my house <laughs> but so be nice this season Always be nice. Be nice to yourself. Okay. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Don't say it mean. <laughs> I like that. As we're going to, I, I can talk to you forever, Laura. But we're going to we're going to end it here because it's been about an hour right here. And she's right. And I'm like that. We're going to end it on this. Be nice to yourself, especially this season. We know it can be tough. We know you want to compare yourself to other people and their Christmases. And they show their pictures and everything. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Um, and just and be, be kind to yourself. I mean, that's just like another thing to have compassion for yourself. These are things we don't talk about very often for ourselves. We say it for everybody else, but what about you? You're, you are the most important person for you. That's how it should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? 
Yeah, you must have heard I mean, so thank you, Laura, for coming on the show. You're great. You have to come back. You're great. Thank you, James. Anytime. You know where to find me. Yeah, no, you're you're no, you're great. This is, this is great. Um, so tell folks where you can find the missing piece and all that kind of stuff. Anything on social media where they can find you there. Sure. So you can Google the missing piece, P-E-A-C-E, Center for Anxiety in Agora Hills. And um, I I would rethink this website now, but this is what it is. It's missing piece p-e-a-c-e the number four so for anxiety.com and um i hope we can help <laughs> what would you what would you have it now if you could have it now what would it be oh god i don't know <laughs> i don't know but something easier than that yeah that, that, no no i because i know I, I say it because i had to uh rebrand uh mid midway of my i've been in business 14 years midway they're like james you gotta cut some of these things and make it easier so i made it easier but i was like it's, it's funny you say that I, i've been there i've done that my sister just changed her email we were laughing so hard she changed it to i really need a butler.com <laughs> <laughs> Email, Robert. That's <laughs> hilarious. Now, now I'm going to send her an email. Uh, that's hilarious. Oh my God. And I'm James Lott Jr. You can follow me. We're all James Lott Jr. All right, James Lott Jr. My website is a lot of help.com. That's with two T's, not one. Um, and you can check this out there. This show is everywhere also. On, if you're listening to us, hello, podcast listeners. Uh, and if you guys do listen to us, I'm really happy about that. Follow us on Apple, Google, Spotify, Deezer. Um, I heard radio, we're everywhere. So to go for a lot of help, again, with two T's, not one. People are like, where are the T? And there's two of them. Go there and check it out. Hit the follow button and listen to her and other people I talk to. And pass it on to people you think need to hear this. It's not just for you, it's for everybody. So go ahead and pass it along to everybody you want to think to hear this. And then, of course, the video versions on my online network, JLJ Media, here on YouTube. So it's youtube.com slash JLJ Media. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's down here or there or there or wherever it is. It's somewhere down there. It's a red button. Laura, I don't know. I always point the right side, wrong spot. But it's a, it's a red button that says subscribe. So if you can read that, hit it. Thank you. And why and why and watch the show there. Um, everyone have a great holiday season, uh, the, the, or, or as well as you can a holiday season. And like she said, be nice to yourself. See you next time.